Hello my dear friends of electronics. In this video I want to show you what is the difference between common mode, differential mode noise and how to find out what is differential mode, common mode, and is there a way to find out. Uh, first of all I want to talk about uh, it's not so easy to define common mode or differential mode but before you talk about that you must be sure that if your device is even C compliant and you combine with a second device which is also C compliant like a power supply and you put two CE together, C device to C device together, it doesn't mean the system is still CE. So what you can do in this case is just to uh, eliminate the noise source in some way. If it's your device, you can rework it. But if your device is not the source, it's just the load, um, you cannot change anything on the device when you buy the system. So the only one thing what you can do if it's a wired system to try to combine and to put some ferrites on the cable. Um, how works this ferrite in the cable? How to recognize what kind of coupling is that? It's very important that you recognize if it's a common mode or differential mode coupling because if you have a common mode noise, like example I have here two wires. You can imagine these two wires on one side is the power supply, other side is your device and now you have a noise on both cables. It means both are transmitting absolutely identical timing, identical noise together and you start to filter the plus wire. You put some ferrite, you put some inductor, some capacitor and you filter on only one wire. On the second one you will have still the noise. It means the coupling will happen and you will still have the noise. Now somebody will tell you, hey, use a common mode choke. You will use a common mode choke on both of these wire or even a snap-on ferrite. You put this snap-on ferrite on both cables and that will helpful and you think, oh, this is excellent. This is something which I can use in all my future designs. The problem is that maybe it's a common mode choke now, but now you redesign your device from through hole technology to surface mode technology and this noise change from common mode to differential mode. Now, if it's a differential mode signal, it means the coupling come on one way through the ferrite or through the inductance, common mode, and turn back on the other side, so it's coupling through and back. It means this compensation will happen in this uh, ferrite core and the effect will be zero. What you think what you can do, some people start to make many, many more turns on the ferrite. It's not a good solution, but also it's not the optimum for to using a snap-on ferrite to make many turns. One, two, a maximum three turns is okay, but not more like three turns. What you can do in this case, if you want to discover the common mode or differential mode noise, um, I will recommend, first of all, use these two wires, take the snap-on ferrite, put the snap ferrite in, and look what happened to your noise level. If you will increase the immunity of your system, or if you decrease the, the eliminated, the radiated noise, that's for sure you may have now a common mode interferences. The solution is, if it's not good enough, is not to put more and more turns together. I would recommend look on this spectrum, and in spectrum you will see with an EMI measurement machine or if you use a spectrumalyzer, in which frequency you have these different problems. And then use in the circuit directly connected in these wires on the PCB a common mode choke. If this solution did not help at all, it means maybe you don't have a common mode noise. Maybe you have a differential mode noise. And then what you can do, just open the ferrite and only for testing, put one ferrite on plus cable and then take another ferrite and put this ferrite on the minus cable. Now, if it's a differential mode noise, you will see an increasing of the impedance. You will see that you will have less interference or a better immunity. Now, again, the solution is not to put many, 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 many ferrites until the cable is full loaded with, with uh, ferrites on, on the cable. This is not the best solution in that case. I would suggest and recommend to use a ferrite bead or an inductor or choke according again to the spectrum measured with a spectrumalyzer or EMI measurement machine. In this case, you will have a cheap solution 
and it's a working solution. But let me examine what happens if you put one turn to the ferrite. Now, I will use only one turn. As soon as you put one turn to the ferrite, you may couple to this ferrite a magnetic field, and this makes eddy current losses, magnetizing losses, and these losses, because taking energy away, which is coming from the noise, made that the noise is attenuated. By one single turn, you have this coupling way, quite very short, and you have a very, very nice wide band of attenuation. If this attenuation is not enough, what you can try to introduce the wire not only once to the ferrite, you introduce twice. As soon as you introduce twice this uh, cable, you may increase in the area of 20 to 80 megahertz exponential the effect of this ferrite. The attenuation will increase and you may have a much better filtering effect. The only one thing you have to think about when you put two times to the ferrite, look what happened here. You have wire side by side. You make a winding capacity. And this winding capacity, even if it's just few pico, in a very high frequency, roughly something like 800, 900 megahertz, a noise will come and will jump to this capacity through and will go out without any filtering. Now, if you need some more filtering effect in lower frequency, roughly something like 10, 20 to maximum 50 megahertz, you can even introduce into the ferrite core third time. You can introduce third time the wire, and then you will talk about not anymore about picofarad, but this wire thickness, you will talk about already about nanofarads. And nanofarads already will be not be any effect of filtering above 100 megahertz to over gigahertz. So at three turns, definitely, Above 100 megahertz, you will not have any filtering effect. If you still have some noise and lower frequency like 10 megahertz, honestly, don't do that. Don't put 20, ferrite, 20 turns into the ferrite because it looks ugly and this is not the correct solution. For that purpose, I suggest and recommend use our low frequency suppressor ferrite beads ferrite cores. We have different ferrite cores with nickel zinc and we have some with manganese zinc as well. The manganese zinc ferrite by one single turn like you can see in this graph already by one turn have the same effect like three turns on the nickel zinc ferrite. If you put here two turns on three turns you will not lose the bandwidth because on the manganese zinc the maximum bandwidth is 30-40 megahertz above this frequency he will not be affected but you will keep the bandwidth and you will have a higher attenuation. If you use a ferrite, like a snap-on ferrite, on the wire like here, and you put two different cables inside, and you want to redesign your device because this is not the most cost-effective solution, uh, for a sh very easy and fast solution, it's a solution, but uh, for long term, you may redesign someday your device and you want to get out of this expensive uh, uh, outside solution and you want to replace that on the board, keep in mind that's a common mode choke. Actually, it's acting very similar like a common mode choke with one single turn. So if you had one turn of nickel zinc ferrite and you replace that by a common mode choke on the PCB, it should be also a nickel zinc based common mode choke. If you put even 10 turns on this ferrite bead, you don't talk about millihenry inductance. You talk about maybe a few couple tens of microhenry inductance, and you should use in the same way a nickel zinc based core common mode choke. If you did use a low frequency suppressor, manganese zinc based uh, ferrite core, you should use also manganese zinc based common mode choke on the PCB. That's the correct solution. Uh, how it works, in fact, a uh, common mode choke. A common mode choke, like here in this picture, you can see this a toroidal core, which has on both sides the same number of turns of the winding. If you apply on this uh, upper level, like in this plus wire, a current, and this will induce a magnetic field in this direction, and you go through your device and you turn back like a minus in the blue wire, it will happen that this uh, current will generate again in the same way a magnetic field. So this magnetic field and this magnetic field, they will cancel themselves and will have 
no effect on differential signal. For common mode, of course, they will act in a different way, and then you will have the maximum power of this ferrite or common mode choke and will affect that the noise will be attenuated. It's very important if you use a common mode choke or a ferrite, it's not allowed to put on front of common mode choke and after the common mode choke the minus to ground. Because if you put both together into the ground, you make a short circuit, in fact, of this uh, common mode choke, and beginning of this point is no effect of filtering. So keep in mind, you have outside ground unfiltered and inside ground filtered. That's the only one solution which you can use if it's a wired system. I know it's much more complicated on the PCB level, because on the PCB you cannot put snap-on ferrites, but sometimes you can cut some uh, circuits and you solder a common mode choke with different uh, inductance uh, uh, level, and you will find as well a solution for that. I would recommend for more information, take one of the Stilogy of Magnetics book uh, we have in, in German, in English, and French, and try to find a solution and uh, try to read this book. This is really highly recommended to check this book for about all these basics. I hope it was good information. See you next time and watch my videos.